Bienvenidos a Educa TV Inglés. Muy buenos días a todos. Welcome to Educa TV English. Bueno, para nosotros es un verdadero placer eh, presentar una nueva edición de Educa TV Inglés. Esto es un espacio único, interactivo, lúdico y pertinente diseñado para los estudiantes de educación media general, justamente en el área de inglés y dirigido para quinto año de educación media general. En esta oportunidad nos acompaña la profesora Indira Bhakti, profesora del Lane Community College, ubicado en el estado de Oregon, en la ciudad de Eugene, donde es profesora de inglés como segunda lengua y a su vez participa como profesora voluntaria en esta iniciativa. Juntas llevamos de la mano este proyecto. Por otro lado, vamos a tener como facilitadores los estudiantes de la Escuela de Educación de la Universidad Católica Andrés Bello, Alexandra Albornoz, Carla Tirado y Santiago Tineo, que justamente nos van a presentar la temática correspondiente al día de hoy acompañados del recurso del Google Classroom que les va a permitir afianzar los conocimientos adquiridos. Es importante tomar en cuenta que este es un proyecto de la Escuela de Educación justamente en el área de servicio comunitario para poder contribuir en la excelencia de nuestra educación. Entonces, una vez más, eh, les quiero agradecer su presencia en el día de hoy y dar la palabra a los estudiantes de la Escuela de Educación que van a ser nuestros profesores facilitadores, como son Alejandra Albornoz, Santiago Tineo y Carla Tirado, para dar inicio a nuestra actividad de hoy. Soy la profesora Yolanda López, coordinadora académica de la Escuela de Educación de la Universidad Católica Andrés Bello y coordinadora del proyecto Educap TV Inglés. Adelante, bienvenidos, muchas gracias por estar. Well, hello everyone, good morning. Glad to see you again. And well, today's class of EDUCAP TV English for fifth year will be about the adjective clauses. And well, you guys know me, I'm Santiago Tineo, one of your teachers, I'm 22 years old, and I'm studying education in pedagogical sciences in UCAP. Hi guys, good morning. Um, my name is Alexander Bernos. I'm one of your teachers, and I also study education at UCA. And today, here, uh, she has uh, problems with the internet, so you have two teachers today. Yeah, but it's okay. Okay, guys, first off, let's remember some things. You can ask any question that you might have and don't be afraid. Just remember to raise, raise your hand and to participate. And in the meantime, please keep your microphone on mute. And well, let's do a review about the adverbial clauses. Okay, here we have a link. We'll put it in the chat soon for you guys to participate also with us.
Okay, let's wait a minute. There we go. Uh huh. See. Will be nice if we share the link. There it is. Thank the you. You're welcome. We wait for you guys. Yeah, let's see how you do this time. Okay, we have teacher in there. Okay. Do any of the students in Colegio San Gabriel have devices that they can join the game with? We hope so. Okay, let's invite them to do that. You guys can join on a computer or a phone if your teacher will let you. Hello, Colegio San Gabriel. It will be nice if you participate with us in this activity. Okay, bienvenidos. Eh, sería interesante que ustedes participaran justamente utilizando el enlace que hemos dispuesto en el chat para que ustedes puedan realizar la actividad, ya sea en grupos o a través de parejas. Así que esperamos por ustedes para empezar. Okay, let's wait a little longer. Okay. Como pueden ver, se encuentra el link en nuestro chat. Así que simplemente copian el link, pegar y entrar. Ya estamos tres y ahora estamos esperando por ustedes. Okay, we have there. Okay, perfect. Okay. okay, we can start with the game. Yeah. Okay, let's see the first one. A ver, which word is the subordinating conjunction? Well, what do you think, teacher Alexandra? I okay, believe it, I think it's I maybe. Yeah, I think so. The, you say number four? Yeah, number four. I think it's number three. Number three. Yeah, yeah, try number three, try number three. No, actually. no, I, I'm going to put this one because I trust you. Oh my God, I, I was wrong, sorry. <laughs> no. No, you actually were right. Yeah, sorry. Don't worry. Uh -huh. Is teacher Yolanda winning again? I think yes, so. Yes. Okay. If number two. Is the one, I think. Yeah. Uh -huh. Can you see the, the question? Yeah. Which word is the subordinating conjunction? We plan to go to the movie if it wasn't if? sold out. If, yeah. Okay. Number three. Okay, identify the adverb 
class. Since I went to her last, I have been looking forward to Frojo's this Friday. Um, maybe in the middle? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Okay, here we go. Number four. Okay, it identified the adverb class. While some children played catch the pine cones, others had cone throwing contest in the summer. I believe it's the yellow one while some children played catch. I think so. Let's see. Okay. Oh, we are the last. Felix and Gabriel is first. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Okay. Identify the adverb class. The children the made balls out of videos. Uh -huh. mm. hmm. <laughs> what know. do you think? You're running out of time, by the way. Help me, Santiago. I think the red one. Before? Maybe the red one. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, uh, because which I have missing years, I have to go to study hall. <laughs> Let's because? see which. No, I think. Um. I believe it's hat. Hat. Okay, yeah. I trust you. Oh, it okay. wasn't. <laughs> you should trust yourself in that one. In those ones. But I ask you because we are a team. That's right. Okay. <laughs> okay. Games that the children practice in skills they would need when they became adults. So, mm, 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 okay. the middle one, maybe? Okay, let's see. No. Um. Okay, number eight. Okay, which word is the subordinating conjunction? When the alarm went off, we had fire drill. I think it's we, what do you think? We, I don't know, I think it's when. Well, we can try a 50-50. Okay. That's good. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. Number nine. Although it was raining, we went outside. Okay, I think it's the blue, the blue one. Okay. Mm hmm. And nice. now number 10. Yeah, this is the last one. Mm hmm. Identify the adverb clause because I love dessert. I went to hell as after school. All right. Um, maybe we can use this power. What do you think? Okay. Oh. Let's see. Because I love this. Yeah. Yay. I was going to say that. Yeah. Okay. We are the hey, that was good. Oh, we, we can have a redemption question. question. Let's see number one. Okay. Uh, uh, okay, I think this was a while. It was, yeah. There we go. Okay, okay we are going to see the results. Okay, let's see. Mm -hmm. Okay, Carlos and Gabriel, congratulations. Yeah, congrats, guys. And Glad number you two, teacher Yolanda. <laughs> yeah, good job. We can continue with the class. Yeah. So let's see. Okay, well, these are the objectives for the class. First, identify when to use 
adjective clauses. Second, describe the types of adjective clauses. Third, distinguish the differences between an adjective, an adjective phrase, and an adjective clause. And last, use adjective clauses in sentences. Okay, but let's see, what are adjective clauses? Well, an adjective clause, also called relative clause, is a type of dependent clause that works to describe a noun in a sentence. It functions as an adjective even though it is made up of a group of words in, instead of just one word. In the case of an adjective clause, all the words work together to modify the noun or pronoun. And here we have some key points to remember. Using an adjective clause can be done easily if you know what all they contain and how they are formed. Before you learn the structure of an adjective clause, you should remember that an adjective clause will always be a dependent clause and will mostly follow the subject or object in the sentence. And as far as the structure of an adjective clause is concerned, here is what you guys need to know. It begins with a relative pronoun such as who, that, which, whose, etc. And some immediately after the noun or noun phrase it is modifying. Also take in mind that this is followed by a noun or a verb. If the relative pronoun is followed by a noun, noun, phrase, pronoun, then there should be a verb as well. And well, we have like a hamburger that might help you remember some things that you see the pronoun or the noun, <laughs> the whom, and then the pronoun and the noun. Okay. And in case a verb follows the relative pronoun, then an adjective is most likely to follow it. Okay, now let's see some relative pronoun list. Starting with who, which is used for people as subjects. And maybe teacher Alexander, do you want to read the example, please? Yeah, of course. Well, the example says, my friend who missed the lecture borrowed some snow to review. Thank you, teacher. And well, we have also whom, which is used for people as objects. And well, we can see the example. Maybe teacher Yolanda can help me with the example. Of course. Example. The candidate whom many people admired won by a landslide. Here Thank we you. have in color orange. Whom. Yeah, we can see whom. Mm -hmm. Okay, the next relative pronoun is which. And we use it for places. Things introduces extra information about an already a specific noun. And well, we have here the example. My new car, which was a gift from my son, needs very little gas. And then we have another relative pronoun, that which is really common. And we use it for people, places, and things. This introduces information necessary to explain a noun. And um, maybe the train data can help me with that sample. Here, 
Um, it's my new car. The, which no, was the, like, oh, the, the second, one. second one. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. No uh, worry. Okay. Example. The man that I met on the bus today works at the World Bank. Exactly. Thank you very much. Okay, we have whose, which we use it to indicate possession. And well, we can see an example. I admire Professor Brooks, whose books were stolen. We have when, and we use it to replace in which, on which, and etc. We have another example. Teacher Alexandra, can you help me out with that one? Okay. Well, July 25, when I left home, was a sad for sorry, was sad for me. Exactly. And um, well, we have where, which we use it to replace in which, on which, as, as well as the previous one. And well, let's see the example. I have always wanted to visit the big house where Julio lives. So, sorry, I didn't hear you. Uh, did you read the, the example? Yeah, I already did. Okay, I, I have some trouble with my internet. Don't worry. Okay, and well, here we have a little image that can help you out a lot. And well, as you see, the adjective without is a multi-word adjective that includes a subject and a verb, and it has three traits. The first is the relative pronoun, which you can see there. We have the subject and a verb, and then we also have the information about the noun. Okay, guys, we have some types of adjective clauses. Adjective clauses can be divided in two based on their nature and behavior in a sentence. The two types of adjective clauses are the first one, essential adjective clauses, and the second, non-essential adjective clauses. Now let's see the first one, the essential adjective clause. Okay, an essential adjective clause is one of that is needed for the sentence to make sense. If you took it out of the sentence, you wouldn't know all the information you need to know. And we have a note here. No specific punctuation marks are used to, se to separate the clause from the rest of the sentence. And now we, we, we have some examples to explain what we are saying here. Okay, we have the first one. And maybe teacher Santiago can help me reading this one, please. Of course, my neighbor does not like children who sit for hours fidgeting their, sorry, fidgeting with their smartphones. Okay. okay, thank you very much. As you can see, we don't have a, a punctuation marks here to distinguish uh, the essential adjective clause. And if we take the orange part, uh, the first sentence uh, doesn't have um, sense. Because you are saying my neighbor does not like ch children, but why the why she sorry why he does not like children? We don't know. So the orange part is very necessary. And the second example we have, we did not find any cafe that sold vegan cakes. You can see what I said before. We didn't have punctuation marks. 
And this is a um, very important part of the sentence we have here. And now we have the second type of adverbial clause, sorry, adjective clauses. This is the non-essential adjective clause. Let's see. Unlike essential adjective clauses, a non-essential adjective clause provides additional information about the noun and is not the main focus. The kinds of clauses, even if it, sorry, even if removed, do not make a difference as the sentence still remains complete without it. So a clause of this nature is enclosed within a pair of commas or brackets to separate it from the rest of the sentence. Now we can see a little um, difference between this and the essential adjective clause. We have the first example, and maybe teacher Yolanda can help me with reading this one. Of course. First example. My brother who lives in Australia will be coming to India next month. Okay, thank you very much. As you can see, we, we separate this in between commas, so you can distinguish um, a, the non-essential adjective clause from the essential adjective clause. And we have the second example that says, the restaurant where we first met Sorry, the restaurant where we first met is being turned down. You can see what I said before. We have commas here and you can see the, what we are talking about. And now we can see a more, in more in, sorry, in a more clear way, the difference between an adjective and an adjective phrase and an adjective clause. Okay. Learning the difference between an adjective and an adjective phrase and an adjective clause will help you use them very clearly. Also, three of them perform the same function. This is actually necessary you to comprehend how each one, sorry, how each of this, this would affect your reading. So, we have a chart that may help you uh, understand what we are talking about. And we have the adjective, adjective phrase, adjective clause. Let's see the adjective. An adjective is a word that modifies the noun or a pronoun in the sentence. Let's see an uh, example of adjective. The children are very smart. You can see the adjective here. And now the adjective phrase. Uh, teacher Sonia, okay, could you help me here? Reading the adjective phrase and the example, please. Yeah, of course, no problem. Let's see. An adjective phrase is a combination of two or more words that describes the noun or pronoun in the sentence. And we have this example. The children of this generation have are very smart. Okay, thank you. Well, you can see uh, two or more words. In this case, we have three words that, that describes the, the pronoun in the sentence. This describes the, the, ch child, the children, sorry. And we have uh, the adjective clause. An adjective clause is a group of words cons consisting of a noun and or a verb preceded by relative pronoun that modifies the subject or object in the sentence. And we have this example. Uh, maybe teacher Indira can help me bring this example, please. Yes. Um, the children are very smart. Uh, sorry, is the, 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 the next one, the adjective class. The, the children of this generation are very smart. Teacher, is, is this, this one? <laughs> Can you tell I'm not paying attention? <laughs> the children who belong to this generation are very smart. I, my apologies. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, well, thank you very much. And we can see the next one, the practice. We have the practice. 
And for the practice, oh wait, oh my God, uh -huh. we have a quiz to practice uh, the adjective clauses. Previous the practice, we have the glossary or something like that. Uh, we have a glossary for the reading. Reading, yes. Yes, yes. very good. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, as you can see, we have a page where we have exercises and you can find uh, more information about the topic of today. We have some questions here. Um, the first part is about true or false. So let's see, number one. An adjective clause is a multi-word adjective that includes a subject and a verb. So let's see, that's true or false. Uh, you guys can put the answer in the chat if you can't talk, don't worry. So what do you think, true or false? Colegio San Gabriel. Hmm. Can you guys put something in the oh, chat? Here. Oh good, they're, they're gonna talk, yay. Yay! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> okay. True or false? <laughs> True or false? <laughs> True or false? No. I could hear them talking about it. Oh. What did they say? Okay. I guess they're gone. Oh, Hello, Jesus. Jesus. Good morning. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh. Hi, Jesus. Welcome. Welcome. So I'm going to say it's false. And then if okay. I'm wrong, you can tell me why. Don't worry, Jesus. Excellent, excellent. Oh, so what do you all hi. think? Is it true or false? OK, did you hear say it's false? What do you think? Okay, Sangra Biral said true. Okay. Let's see, guys. It's true. Yeah, congratulations, okay, why? guys. Why? Why is it true? I was wrong. Well, because the and the adjective clause is compound by the, as you can see, the subject, the verb. And the relative pronoun. So, okay, thank you. You're welcome. And the second one an adjective clause usually comes before the noun it modifies. True or false? Mm. And you okay. can also participate. Pay Santiago, oh. <laughs> you're very quiet now. And Colegio okay. San Gabriel said true. They say true. No, sorry guys, it's false. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have another kind of hmm, question here. Select the example with the with an adjective clause. Number one, the dog that be the postman. Number two, the dog in the next street. And, and number three, 
My mother's new dog is hilarious. Okay, what is up for this? Sorry? I'll help you out if you want. What? I can help you out if you want. And well, yeah. I believe... Oh, let's see. Colegio San Gabriel says it's letter C. Mm, letter I am C. not with Colegio San Gabriel. I think not. Okay, what do you think, teacher? Letter A. Okay, I, letter A. I'm with teacher Yolanda for this yeah, one. Yeah, me too. Let's see. Yeah, letter A, guys. But nice try. You're hip to learn. So, number four, select the example with an adjective cause. Letter A, I regret nothing. Letter B, the things that I most regret. Letter C, I regret so many decisions. Hmm. Let's see the chat. Um, what do you think letter C? I think it's letter C too. So, we can see. No. I think it's B. B. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't worry. Oh, guys. Okay. Say B. okay. Okay. Let, and number five, sell the true statement. Letter B. An adjective clause usually start with a relative pronoun, has a subject and a verb, and tells us something about a noun or a pronoun. Letter B. An adjective clause is a type of phrase, not a clause. Okay, I think it's letter A. Do you think? Yes, I am with you. Yeah, I think this is. Okay. Yeah. A little okay. bit easy. Letter A. Let's see how many. Okay. Okay, what well, do we have to do here? Select so the relative pronoun in the following sentence. Aha, uh -huh, guys. We have a, a, this one. We have to select the relative pronoun in the sentence. Do you remember the relative pronouns? We have uh, we had a list in well, one of uh, the sites. So do you remember? I do remember. I remember too. So, what do you think, guys? Yeah, don't be afraid to participate. Mm. What do you think? Colegio San Gabriel, Gabriel, Jesus. Which one? A or B? You can put the answer. Which, which chicken uh, or dog? Chicken or dog. Okay, no, no, guys. Remember, let's remember the list. Okay. Relative pronoun, not names. The relative so pronouns are W H words. Yeah. Okay. I think, sorry, don't worry. No worries. Remember the relative pronouns. We have who, whom, which, that, whose, when, where. What do you think? Well, I, I had. I answer, think I it's one which is that, used for people, places, and things. That. Yes. Yeah, that one. That is. <laughs> yeah, this is the relative pronoun, guys. Mm -hmm. Now, number seven. Select the sample with a restricted class in bold. Letter A. The boy who stole your bike has been caught. Letter B, the police are questioning Trevor Jones, who handed himself in yesterday. So letter A or letter B? Mm. 
I think it's letter A. Yes, I am with you, Santiago. Okay, you were right. And, and Colegio San Gabriel you. said letter A too. Okay, you were right, guys. And we have two questions left. And let's see. Select the example with a restricted adjective cross. Letter A, the burglar who stole the painting turned out the sorry, turn out to be the artist. Letter B, the burglar who returned to give the house or, or corner CPR was praised for his compassion but still dear. What do you think? I believe uh, it is the first one, letter A. Again, let's see. Yeah, you were right. And now the last question. Select the example with an unrestricted adjective cross. Letter A, kindness is a language with the deaf can hear and the blind can see. Letter B, true love is like goals, which everyone talks about and few have seen. Oh, that's a good sentence. Okay, uh, well, what do you think? Letter A, letter B. Uh, for that one. Um, letter B maybe? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, because we have a punctuation mark here. We have a comma. So, there we go. Well, guys, thanks for your participation and congratulations to Colegio San Gabriel. You were right. I think we can continue. And as always, we have a reading today about April's Fools. And we have uh, so some pretty questions. The first one is, what do you know about April Fool's Day? And the second one, do you like to play tricks on people? Do you like when people play tricks on you? What do you say? Do you know something about April Fool's Day? Yes or no? I think they might know something about the April Fools, but not exactly related to April. Yes, perhaps they have the idea from December 28th, Dia de los Inocentes. Exactly. Well, basically, April Fools is El Dia de los Inocentes, but in some other countries. And yeah, they do that thing, tricks, stuff like that. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. And guys, well, do you like to play tricks on, tricks on people? I can say I like to. I don't know what do you say, Santiago? Uh, yeah, I do like to play little tricks on people. It's kind of fun. I knew it. <laughs> yes, I it's knew. very funny. Yeah, you, you play tricks on me too, so mm -hmm. I know you like. <laughs> <laughs> now we have a glossary uh, to understand some words uh, we're going to see in the reading. Maybe these words you, you don't know, but okay. Let's see the first word and Sandel, can you help me reading this one yeah assigning giving someone a particular job or duty thank you very much we have the second one thrill very happy and excited this is like a synonym of this number three uh, maybe teacher Yolanda can read this one of course Spread to pass from person to person. Thank you. And the last one, spit to force saliva from your mouth. 
Okay. And if you have any doubt about these words and you don't understand, you can ask, remember. And now we have the reading about April Fools. Okay, before we start with this, and you have to know in this space you will find the reading, and also you will find um, a, something to hear. You can hear a, a person reading the text, so it can help you to improve your pronunciation. And yeah, you can use it a, after the class. So April Fool's Day, and now uh, we have the first um, paragraph. Who wants to read this one? I can. Uh, to read. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Of reading. course. Reading. I can. Um, Go ahead. Okay. <clears throat> Look, there's a camel walking down the street. April, April Fool. There's a spider in your hair, April Fool. A teacher says to her students, I'm not assigning any homework tonight. The students are thrilled. thrilled. They have a, with smiles on their faces. The teacher then says, April Fools. We can spread April Fools. Uh, April Fool. Fools day, fun through our words and actions. Okay, thank you very much. Now the second paragraph. And I need uh, another volunteer to read this one. Jesus, do you want to participate? Jesus. Um, I can. Okay, go ahead. Shan took the sugar uh, the sugar bowl and replaced it with safe. He started mixing a spoonful of what he told was sugar into his morning cup of coffee. After you one sip, sense that beat the coffee all um, onto the table. It tasted a full Sam who was quickly eating his breakfast. Dolly exclaimed a happy 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 little fools day that they both had a good love. Okay, thank you very much. Now, now we have this one. Um, well, I, I can read this. April 1st is April Fool's Day. Many people like to play jokes or tricks on this day. These jokes are for fun only. They are silly, not harmful or mean. You will often hear April Fool's take jokes on the radio on the radio or TV. Some even appear in the newspapers. If you believe the jokes, um, silly stories on the radio, TV, or in newspapers, you are an April Fool. Okay, this one. Maybe teacher Sandel can help me with this. Yeah. Where did April Fool's Day holiday begin? Why on April 1st? No one knows where or when April Fool's Day began. Some people believe it started in France in the 100, uh, sorry, 1500s. Others uh, believe it began in Italy 
April Fool's Day has been celebrated in England and Scotland since the 1700s. Thank you, Santiago. And here, uh, I don't know if Teacher Yolanda wants to read this. Of course. Some people think April Fool's Day started because of the spring weather. In the spring, the weather changes every day. One day, it may be 80 degrees, and the next day, it could be 50 degrees. The spring weather tricks people. Thank you. And the last one, uh, Teacher Indira, can you help me? Yes. Okay. No matter how or when it began, April Fool's Day is a fun, silly holiday celebrated by people all over the world. People enjoy the fun and laughter of playing tricks on each other. Mark Twain said, the first of April is the day we remember that we are the other 364 days of the year. <laughs> Very nice. Yes. Okay, guys. Well, thank you very much, Teacher Nita. And remember, you can also if find uh, audios here to practice your pronunciation. Now we have uh, some questions about the reading. So the first one is, where did April Fool's Day begin? Do you remember? I do remember. Okay, you can tell us. Yeah, well, actually, no one knows for sure. Mm -hmm. Like, a, people start doing this, but yeah, no one knows exactly why, why it's on April 1st. All we know is it might have been started in France or maybe Italy, but yeah, it's something at least that has been celebrated in England and Scotland since quite a few years now. Okay, yeah, that's the correct answer. Nobody knows where April Fool's Day began. So that's very interesting. And the question uh, number two, how do people celebrate this holiday? How do you say? Um, with trucks and jokes. Yeah, the, the reading says uh, people play tricks on, on other persons. And you also can find jokes in newspaper, radio, Thanks, you. Tricks. TV. Tricks and jokes. Yeah, tricks and jokes. And well, uh, um, you have uh, the third question. April Fool's Day is celebrated in what season and why? Do you remember? Mm, yes, just I read before. Uh, is that springtime? Yeah, that's correct. Because you have different degrees around the day. Okay, that's correct. Thank you, teacher. And now we have the recommendation for you. And it's about set goals for yourself. So set a small goals for yourself that will motivate you to keep learning English and increase the, these goals over time. So you can maybe do a checklist with the things you want to, to do, and that could be a, a good way to improve your English skills. Yeah, and I will say that you guys should not be afraid to start small with these goals for yourself because everything helps you. 
you can start setting yourself like, well, I will learn three new words uh, this week. And next week you increase to five words. Or you can say, well, next week I will read um, a news on English. And yeah, you go like in Greece and you can see a movie maybe with English subtitles and that kind of things that can help you. You just start small and keep increasing like the challenge. Well, guys, uh, remember to subscribe to our channel. You will find all the classes there. And here you have the, the classroom code if you are not uh, a part of it. And well, see you next Friday by, at the same hour, 11 a.m. And well, guys, thanks for being here today with us. And bye bye. Bye, guys. Have a nice day. Bye, everyone. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye. See you next week. Okay. See you. And thank you very much for your participation. We wait for you next Friday at 11 o'clock. Okay. Bye. Thank today, you. Today, we didn't have internet, so we entered late. And well, then it's class. We will try to enter it earlier. Okay, nice to have you and Jesus in our class. Okay, thank okay. you, goodbye. Bye. Bye, thank you.